Hi everyone, welcome back to my lab and today's video which is going to be my monthly roundup of my makeup basket. Essentially, I gather different products to use throughout the month and at the end of the month or in the middle of the month this time, I come back and let you know what I think of all of these products. This is essentially part of my operation curation and my low buy year. I'll go ahead and pop the rules up on the screen if you're interested in knowing what those are. And essentially, I'm just working my way through my makeup collection, making sure that everything that I have are items that I actually enjoy. Rotating through them this way allows me the opportunity to declutter items that no longer serve any function in my collection. This is the first drawer of my vanity and here you have the second. I will just share face palettes today. If you're interested in the eyeshadow palettes that are in these two containers here, I already did a monthly roundup and ranking video of all of the palettes I used in the month of February and I'll link that up in the cards if you're curious and checking it out. Before we get into the details of all of the products that I used this month, if you're new here, I'm Jodi. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I hope you're going to enjoy this one and if so, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up while you're watching and hit that subscribe button if you would like to be friends. Now without any further delay, let's go ahead and get into the details of all of the products I used during the month of February. Here's the first acrylic organizer. I had actually forgotten to add my foundation that's from my project pan so I'm going to include that here and we're going to go ahead and go through these products in categories. So we're going to start out with the two foundations that I was using this month. The first one was one of my purchases from January. This is the number one de Chanel. This is the Camellia Rouge foundation. I picked mine up in the shade BD31 and the shade match is okay. It's the Red Camellia Revitalizing Foundation. This one does have a pump and I've worn it on occasion on my channel several times. I like the foundation. I don't love it. What I like about it is that it does apply nicely. It's a little bit more full coverage than what I prefer. I wouldn't call it full coverage by any means. This is more like a medium coverage. It's buildable to about a medium, but it is a natural finish foundation and I prefer something a little bit more lightweight, a little bit more luminous. And so for that reason, I just like it. I don't love it. It. but I do prefer it to the Lisa Eldridge foundation because the Lisa Eldridge foundation is just too matte on my dry skin. I actually have a couple more blister pack samples of the Lisa Eldridge foundation that I've been meaning to try because a lot of you really do love the foundation, but I just disliked it so much the first time I tried it. I haven't gotten around to trying them again, but I do want to give it another go. And so I have these in my drawer just to use them when inspiration strikes. The same goes for these Neo Nude True to Skin Natural Glow foundation from Armani. The second foundation I mentioned was from my project pan and you can see I have it marked from when I started. My goal in my project is to use this foundation completely so you're going to be seeing it every single month. This is one of my absolutely favorite favorite foundations because it is lightweight. It is a slight luminous finish and it's also waterproof and I just love the way that this lays on the skin. It's a beautiful beautiful foundation and it's been one of my favorites for a really really long time. Always recommend this one and I have mine in the shade C3. It's since been reformulated or repackaged but I find that the new formula behaves just the same as this one and that's the reason why I'm trying to pan my older bottle because I do have a small one of the new formulation. These are the two primers that I had in my rotation last time. The Ciate Watermelon Burst Hydrating Primer is a very nice primer. I like that it has a slight tack to it. This was also in my project pan and this time around I was able to finish it. I do have a full size of this one and that's why I added this one to the project pan to make sure that I finished it up and just moved it out of my collection. Last month I was trying the Touch and Soul Icy Sherbert Primer and this time around I wanted to bring in one that I was very very familiar with to test it along with the Chanel foundation and so I brought in the Pretty Filter Glassy Skin Balm. This is one of my favorite favorite primers. You can see the consistency is really, really lightweight. I think that the closest thing that I could compare this to is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, even though I do enjoy that one more, but this is a more reasonably priced alternative and one that I really enjoy because my foundations glide really nicely over it. There's no tack. I really use this one as a hydrating kind of primer. I don't find that it extends the wear of my makeup any, but it's just really nice and it allows my foundations to glide very nicely over it. At first, I didn't think I enjoyed the Chanel foundation that much, but after pairing it with a very hydrating primer like this one, I enjoyed it much, much more. These are the brow products I focused on this month. You may recognize this one already. This is 
the Real Her Definer Brow Pencil in the shade I Am Inspiring. I mentioned in my favorites video, this was in my favorites for the month of February, that I didn't enjoy the brush because it's just a little bit short, but I do enjoy the pencil and the color very, very much. It's not as fine of a point as, say, the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil, but this is so creamy that I just barely have to touch the surface of my skin and it applies really, really nicely. It's not too waxy and it's just pigmented enough for me to do the underside of my brows. It's just a really, really nice brow pencil. And actually when I am all out of brow pencils, this is one that I will intentionally seek out as a replacement. Really, really enjoyed this one. My highlighting brow duo I mentioned in my last Shop My Stash, I use this to clean up the underside of my brow and I'm just gonna keep using it until this side is all done. I'm still yet to use this side that has a little bit more of a shimmer tone. See, it has a shimmery finish. I can use that maybe um, in the inner corner or just beneath my brow for a highlighting effect, but it's a little bit darker than I would like. But this shade on this side works really, really well to clean up my brows. For a brow gel, I was using this one from Merit Beauty. And this one is interesting, the packaging. The smaller end is on this side and I always feel like that's the lid, but actually that's the container. See the lid and the applicator is on this side. And this is just one of those brow gels that has a little bit of fiber built in. I'm glad that I got this one in PR from the brand because I use it in place of the one that I had by Hourglass, which was finished and ready to be put in my empties. And this one is really, really nice. Uh, paired with the rest of my product, I do feel that it kind of combs through my brows, gives them a little bit more volume not extreme hold but my brows are not that badly behaved so for me it works really really well and on a day that I'm not doing the whole brow routine it gives me just enough volume that I feel comfortable with my brows as they are so this is a pretty nice product from Merit Beauty this is something that's been kicking around in my collection for a while it's the Cabral from Benefit it's the number four cream gel brow color and this one has a little brush built into the cap that I generally don't use. I prefer my own brush. And then when you open it up, it's just a little bit of a brow pomade. This one is starting to dry out. I've had it in my collection for quite a while and I can get it to work. So I'm gonna work with it again in the future until it's just gone bad that it doesn't function anymore. But I find like with the pencil and the brow gel, I was getting enough that I didn't necessarily need to use this product. It's okay, it's a little bit bulky for a brow product, but it is very, very cute packaging. For mascara, I was using this one by Merit. This one is called their Perfect Black Lengthening Mascara. And if you notice, it's the only mascara that I was using this month because I liked it enough that I was using specifically this one. Now I do find that this is a tubing mascara, so it removes best with water. If you use like an oil-based makeup remover or a makeup remover balm, it doesn't really do anything against the mascara. But if you apply just a little bit of water, it comes off very, very easily. It's supposed to have conditioning properties for your eyelashes as well to help them grow and keep them healthy. I've only used it for about a month so I can't really speak to that aspect but I like the mascara enough that I didn't feel the need to bring in another one into the rotation. So it's a pretty nice mascara, very nice in terms of separation. I was surprised because I actually don't enjoy natural bristle brushes but for a natural bristle brush like this one, you can see it right there, it gives me a decent amount of separation and length, not so much volume. So if you are looking for volumizing mascara, maybe this one isn't the one but if you like lengthening and separation it's really really good and I do enjoy it. Because the mascara didn't have a volumizing aspect I did bring in an eye primer. This is one that I've had kicking around for a while as well. This is the Givenchy mascara primer. I don't know if they even carry this anymore. I probably should get rid of this one but this is actually nice to add a little extra volume to your lashes and then when you apply the mascara over it it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. So that's why I pulled this one in. I do enjoy using a lash primer, but I don't necessarily always take the time to do so. But I do think that a lash primer pairs very, very well with the Merit Mascara. Next, we have a whole lot of eye pencils. And I wanted to mention first this Vintage Cosmetics, something I got in my BoxyCharm, but it still functions very, very well because it's a sharpenable one. This is why I always prefer sharpenable pencils. You can see it's very, very pigmented, applies very, 
very, very smoothly. My only complaint with this one is that it does transfer. So if I tight line my upper lashes with this and then I apply a different color on the lower lash line, I find that it almost always transfers. So I usually reserve this eyeliner when I want to have black on the top and bottom lashes since it transfers anyway. But it's very, very creamy and very, very dark. I do enjoy the quality of the pencil. It's teeny tiny, so I'll be working my way through it as I go along. Next, I have something from Tarte that I'm very surprised that it still works. This is the Tarte On Fleek Eyeliner, and this one does have a twist up, which is rare for me. Right now, you're seeing a little bit of blue but you can see that it still swatches very, very intensely. Very pretty color. I do like that these pencils match the color of the liner so that you know what you're going to get. I have a little bit of blue on the pencil itself because I was wearing this with a blue look I created using my Odin's Eye eyeshadow palette. That was the look I was wearing in my last video. But in terms of quality, this one is still going strong and I actually brought it in because this Marc Jacobs Beauty one, which is also a twist up, this one which they're very very beautiful pencils I mean right now this brand is discontinued or on hiatus I, for some reason I could not get this to transfer to my waterline I'm actually surprised that it's swatching on my hand I was going to declutter this one but maybe it just needed to be warmed up hmm. when I was applying it before it actually was not even putting color down on my skin so maybe it just needed to be warmed up it's been pretty cold in Chicago and pretty cold in my house so I was intending to declutter it but maybe I will give it a second chance this was pretty much along the same lines this is the Colourpop gel liner in the shade honey dude again a twist up and this was giving me the same issue and here it is again transferring color to my skin hmm maybe that's what it was maybe I need to warm these up a little bit before I apply them I know I still have a significant amount I thought I was gonna declutter that but maybe I will try it one more time I'm gonna bring both of these pencils into next month rotation and try them in the waterline again and see if they work out I just hate to waste product this Rimmel exaggerate waterproof eye definer is one that I brought in because of the issue I was having with the ColourPop one and this one I used absolutely completely. It is a twist up but I feel like it doesn't have as much product and I actually have just enough to swatch it for you. So you can see that it's just a cream colored eyeliner that I use in the waterline and this is fairly affordable. You can find it at the drugstore and I do recommend this one. I definitely recommend it more than the ColourPop. This one was working even in the cold whereas the ColourPop I could get that color to translate to my eyes so this one is now empty it's I can't really pull it out anymore and it's too short for me to apply to my waterline so I actually just had enough to swatch it for you and let you know that this one is something that I do recommend it does have a smudger on one side as well as a little sharpener but I never really used that Another colorful liner. This one is the Too Faced Killer Liner. Total Control 36 Hour Waterproof Eyeliner in the shade Killer Sapphire. I do definitely love these pencils. Last time I got them on the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale, and even though they look like they might be twist up, they're actually sharpenable. Very creamy, very pigmented. I definitely think Too Faced did a great job with this liner, and I really like that it's sharpenable. For liquid liner, I was using this one by Benefit. This is the Roller Liner I Eyeliner, and even though it has a brush tip applicator, this is a very, very fine tip and it's also very, very flexible. So you're able to get a really fine line. And I find that even though I was storing it in my drawer laying down, I never had issue with the tip drying out. When I have it in my collection, I do store it with the tip pointing down. But in my makeup drawer, I had it laying down and it never dried out. I was always able to do both eyes without having any real issue. And I just think that this is a great liquid liner. It's one of my favorites for sure. I do have two lash adhesives to share with you today. This one has been my absolute favorite. This is the Calus Eyelash Adhesive. You can buy this one on Amazon. You can also buy it on Muse Beauty Pro, I believe, and it is a latex-free and clear eyelash adhesive. I like that it has kind of an iridescence to it, so when you put it on your lash band, you can see the iridescence, and as soon as the iridescence disappears, that's when you know the lash is tacky enough for you to 
apply. And this is really good in terms of adhering your lashes. I never have any issues with my lashes lifting throughout the day, even if my eyes water. It's a fantastic lash glue, but on that same vein, it's a little bit more difficult to wash off. So I was reserving this kind of lash glue for days in which I was going to be outdoors a lot, or if I had a stage performance when I was dancing and things like that. But at this point, it's relatively low, and it's at that point where it's just kind of gunky, and it's harder to get a decent application. So this is one that I definitely want to replace. It's a very, very good lash glue. So since that one was pretty much empty, I started using this Kiss Strip Lash Adhesive, and this one is also latex-free, formaldehyde-free, and it is the clear version. I prefer to work with clear lash glues, and this one I'm having the same issue now that it's just kind of gunky, and it's not putting a nice layer on my lashes. This one is a more everyday lash adhesive. It doesn't glue the lashes down as well as the callus one, but it's a decent one at the drugstore, and I like that it does not stink like the Duo one. That one stinks really bad. So both of these are going in my empties. Here's the eyeshadow primers that I was using. I'm going to go ahead and mention the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. This is just an excellent standby for longevity for everyday makeup looks. I use a very, very light film of this eyeshadow primer, like maybe that much per eye, like a super, super tiny amount like that. And that's enough for one eye. And I like to use this eyeshadow base in general, but in particular when I'm trying out a brand new eyeshadow formula, since I know how this performs, then I can make some conclusions on the eyeshadow formula if I'm working with a primer that I'm very, very familiar with. So I keep this on standby for trying out new eyeshadow palettes. Now this NARS one is a really nice one. This is just a little sample size one and it is the clear one. It's very similar to the Urban Decay one in that you just need the tiniest, tiniest amount. Neither one of these really blink out your eyelids. So if you're looking for that kind of application, I wouldn't recommend these. The NARS does come in tints. So maybe one of the tinted versions would give you that effect. But in terms of the one that I have that is clear, it's just a clear eyeshadow base. But I find that eyeshadows apply really, really well over this one. It performs very similarly to the Urban Decay. Now, if I'm looking for heavy duty blanking of the eyelids and I'm working with really colorful shadows, I do like to use this one by Gerard Cosmetics. This is the Clean Canvas Eye Base and I have mine in the shade Fair. I like to use this one for cut creases and things like that. This is going to last me forever because a little bit does go a very, very long way. And this is a true eyeshadow base. I find that it's not as emollient as a concealer. If I use a concealer on my oily eyelids, it almost always creases. But this one actually resists against the oils in my skin and also all of the folds that I have on my eyelids. And so I really, really enjoy this one. And I like to use it especially for cut creases. Next, we have the Pat McGrath Labs Intensifies Artistry Wand. This is something that I'm using to intensify metallic eyeshadows specifically from her collection. And one thing that I noticed when I was using this is that if I go directly over my eyelid, if I have my matte shadows kind of laid down already, this does lift the matte shadows. You can't see it right now because it's clear, but I've used it in several eyeshadow palette reviews and you can definitely see how it lifts the matte shadows that I have underneath. Underneath. Usually that doesn't bother me because I'm about to cover the area that I laid this down on with metallic shadows and it does intensify metallic shadows and allow them to adhere to the lid a little bit better. But I would be very, very careful not to put this in any areas that you don't want to cover with a metallic eyeshadow because it does mess up whatever you did with your matte shadows. Another thing to be mindful of is that it advances by clicking on the end and you cannot retract it. So once it comes out, it kind of has to has to stay out. I like this product. I'm not over the moon with it like some people were that this was like their product of last year. I think it's good but I don't think it's anything different than say a glitter glue and I actually find that a glitter glue which I apply with my fingertip disturbs my matte shadows less than this one. These are the two powders I was working with this time around. I don't use a lot of powders per se. I have this one by one size. It's the ultimate setting powder in the shade translucent. And the way that I like to use this powder is just little sample size. 
is I use it just underneath my brows to allow my eyeshadow base to set a little bit and allow matte shadows to blend upward really, really nicely. I have used this underneath my eyes and I find that it's just a little bit too heavy for my liking. I think that this is a product that was more intended for the baking technique and things like that that I don't do very frequently because it just makes my under eyes look very, very heavy and dry. But I've been enjoying using it as part of my eyeshadow routine. And since I just have a little mini one, I'll continue to use it in that way. The other powder is one that was really celebrated by people with dry skin. And this one is the Feathery Cloud Set. So Feathery is the shade I picked up. I think it's one of the like light medium shades. I always found I didn't enjoy this packaging. Even though it looks very pretty, it's a little bit hard to open. And you can see that I have barely made a dent in this powder. I was using this to set underneath my eyes. And I found that I was applying more than what I wanted because this is so firmly press that when you put your brush in there you really don't see any powder on your brush and so I think I was overdoing it by reapplying more than I thought I needed. Usually I use the Charlotte Tilbury powder or the Pat McGrath under eye powder and those are very soft so I can definitely see when I grabbed some powder. This one is a little bit different and to be honest I'm still kind of getting to know this one. So far I'm not in love but I need to try this one a little bit more. And that was everything that was in the first tray. Here we have my second tray of blushes, concealers, lip products, contours, and other face powders. So let's go ahead and go through these. So here we have the color corrector and the concealers that I was using this time around. The color corrector that I was using is the newest one by NARS. This one is in the shade Light. And I find that I actually don't like this one as much as I like the one by Charlotte Tilbury. So you can see the tone is very, very peachy. And I think for something that is in the shade light, it could actually darken somebody's under eye that has a lighter skin tone than I do. It's designed to counter blue and so I understand the peachiness, but it's just a little bit darker than I personally prefer. I think it's okay, but I do have a tendency to prefer something that is a little bit more dry in texture. It sounds so counterintuitive with my dry and more mature under eyes, but for some reason this one just makes a heavier layer of product. With something that's very dry, I can kind of tap it on lightly to color correct and then add an additional layer of concealer. I think it's okay. It's just fine. I didn't love it as much as other people seem to love this product last year at the end of last year and the beginning of this one. The two concealers that I was trying out this time around were the NYX Bear With Me Concealer. This was something that was recommended by one of you. I picked mine up in the shade beige and I'll go ahead and swatch this one. I always try to clean it off after I use it because the lid is clear and I don't like my makeup to get messy. It is a really, really nice lightweight concealer. You can see the consistency there. It's very thin, but it has very good coverage, and it does have a serum -y texture to it. I do find that it applies really well, and a little bit does go a very long way. It's really, really nice. That one was in my favorites video for the month of February. Really like it. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, I tried this one by Anastasia Beverly Hills. Another thing that was really highly celebrated, this is the Magic Touch Concealer, and this one is a more full coverage concealer, but it is supposed to be hydrating as well. Here you have a swatch of that one. I picked mine up in the shade number nine, and I think the shade is very good for my skin tone, and it has a thicker consistency than the NYX one. It dries down a little bit faster as well. The ABH one reminds me of the Dose of Color Concealer in that it is hydrating, but it is definitely a more thick formula. To be perfectly honest, I was enjoying the NYX concealer so much. I didn't use the Anastasia concealer as much. Also, I do remember that the Anastasia one needed to be set. It would crease on me very, very quickly if I didn't set it down with powder. Like even now, I can definitely feel that this one has started to dry down a little bit, whereas the NYX one is still very, very emollient. And maybe that's why I like it. It hydrates my under eyes really, really nicely. From this little batch, my main recommendation is definitely the NYX. I'll have to play with the color corrector and the ABH concealer a little bit more. For contour, I enjoyed this product so, so much that it was the only product I used all month. 
This is the KKW Beauty Contour Stick in the shade Light. This was one that I purchased well after her initial launch with the double-sided one that had very little product. This one doesn't have very much product either, as you can see, but the shade is just so perfect and it is so creamy and it blends so easily. I put this one in my favorites video as well, despite the fact that you can no longer purchase it. I started using it because I was lusting after the Rare Beauty bronzer sticks, and this one remind, reminded me of it in packaging and in style, and I discovered that I absolutely love it so much so that I didn't feel the need to have any other contour in my drawer for the entire month. I loved it. Hopefully if she brings her brand back, she will include these contour sticks. These are the two bronzers that I was working with this month. The first one was one of my product disappointments and this is the Too Faced. And this is the Hot Cocoa uh, limited edition bronzer that came out for holiday. I bought it when it came on sale and I had heard Teresa is dead kind of rave about this little bronzer but she's a lot more fair skin than I am and even though I can get this one to work for my skin tone it is definitely a little bit light like even if I swatch the darker portion you can see that it's very minimal color payoff on my skin tone you can start to see it there what I do enjoy about it is the smell it smells really really good it smells like cocoa powder and it's very very cute in terms of packaging but I'm disappointed that I purchased it at Sephora even at $20 or so because I was at the cosmetics company outlet and they have an entire bin filled with the little set that came with this and the plumping lip gloss so it's okay. It's one that I can use. It's not something that I'm going to declutter just yet, but it's not my absolute favorite for sure. Since this one was a little bit of a pain to use, and last month one of you told me that the Vesca bronzer was one of your favorites. That was Brit. So thank you for the recommendation. I have the Vesca bronzer. Um, I got it in a boxy charm and I picked mine up in the shade Kissed by Santorini. It was one of my choice items and this one you will see that it has a lot more color payoff on initial application. So you can see it right there with just one light swatch. It definitely has more payoff right away. It's a very, very soft product. I do like that it's a matte bronzer. Sometimes when I'm using more natural finished products on the skin, I like to use matte bronzers for that really nice velvety look. It's very challenging for me to achieve that look with my dry skin, but products like this really, really help. This is what I like about doing my shop, my stash a little bit more organically because if I pull in a product that is disappointing and someone recommends something else, if I have it in my collection, I can kind of pull it in and then focus on that for the rest of the month. And so I was able to enjoy this Vesca bronzer and get some use out of that one. If ever I had more leisure time to do my makeup, then I would go ahead and use the Too Faced one just to get some use out of it. For individual highlighters, I was only using this one. This was my newest highlighter in my collection back in January, and I pulled it into my project pan when I was prompted to select my newest product in my deck of panning project pan. This was something that I bought from the BoxyCharm pop-up, and it's in the shade Moonlight. And I've been mostly using this highlighter. My goal is to use it a total of 15 times. There's the shade there, and I find that this looks really, really nice applied to the skin. Even though it's a powder highlight, it has a very, very sheer, kind of lit, with, lit from within look. And the peachiness of this shade actually really flatters my skin tone. This one comes in maybe five different shades. So if this one isn't your cup of tea in Moonlight, there are definitely other options. It's much smaller than I thought it was going to be when I bought it. You can see if I put it next to the bronzer, it's significantly smaller. But you know what? That actually makes sense because you use a lot more bronzer than you do highlights. You have 10 grams of the bronzer and six grams of the highlighter. That actually makes perfect sense, but it just caught me off guard since I had already had this one. And when I got this one, I was expecting it to be a little bit bigger. Anyway, it's a really, really nice powder highlight and it gives me very similar to the effect of a cream highlighter, which is my preference. I was using one other highlighter this month, but that one is in a face palette and I'll show it to you shortly. These are the blushes that I was using this month. I'll speak on this one first. This is the Butter 
blush by physicians formula and this shade i believe has been discontinued it is in the shade plum rose and the reason why i pulled this one into my collection is that i know i purchased a blush last month and with my one in one out rule i have to declutter a blush if i purchase a new one and i thought that this one was going to be something that doesn't show up on my skin tone it wasn't brand new when I pulled it into the shop. My stash, I had used it before, but it had been a while. I didn't remember. And it turns out that this blush is very similar to like a Tarte Exposed, that it looks very unassuming in the pan and on a swatch, but when you apply it to your skin, it actually has a very, very nice blush. So you can barely see it on my skin, but it actually gives you a really, really nice, pretty blush color. These do have the typical butter bronzer kind of smell, and um, they're very nice. I like that they're buildable, so you can see it's starting to build. It's hard to see it on my skin. You really have to see this applied to the face because it has that tart exposed kind of vibe. I don't feel that I'm necessarily ready to part with it. Not sure. It's, it surprised me. It took me off guard. I don't love it, but it wasn't as bland as I thought it was going to be. It actually works really well for colorful looks. And then I have this little Graftobian Professional Makeup Color Palette, and this is a palette of blushes. I pulled this one into my shop, my stash, because I'm really, really lusting after the Danessa Myricks Cream Blush Palettes. They're like blush and lip product hybrids, and this reminded me so much of it, and this is already in my collection so Graftobian is a professional makeup brand and you can see that i've gotten quite a bit of use out of the three shades here i haven't used the other two it's kind of looking like it's sweating but it was actually my first time using this product i had received this one in some kind of beauty box or as a gift with purchase or something like that from camera ready cosmetics and these are beautiful products. A little bit goes a long way. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch a couple of these. They are just as emollient as people are describing the Danessa Myricks palette, and that's why I wanted to bring this one in. It just reminded me so much of the Danessa Myricks, and I thought that it could satisfy kind of my urge to buy those palettes. <laughs> oh, this one is a lot more sheer than the others. Let's see if I can build it up. Yeah, this one is a lot more sheer and more emollient, but those two have really nice pigment. Let me try another one. I'll try this one here. Yeah, there's something different about that shade. The others are pretty consistent, and the first one is as well. It's a really, really nice palette. Definitely enjoyed using it. These are very, very pigmented, but very, very blendable, and they apply well even over powder. Will I still buy the Danessa Myricks palette? probably at some point, maybe for the Sephora sale, but it was fun to play with something that I already own to even get a feel for the product and see if it would be something that I enjoy. And I actually really, really enjoy these. Here are the lip products that I was working with this month. We'll go ahead and start with some of the liners. And with the liners, I have this 24-7 Urban Decay lip pencil in the shade Rush. It's a very nice rosy color. You can see it right there. I always enjoy the 24-7 liner, liners from Urban Decay, both the lip pencils as well as the eye pencils. They're very good and again, sharpenable, which I love. Because I had a lot of nudes here, I brought in the Wayne Goss Essential Lip Pencil, also sharpenable, and this one is more nude in tone. So I had a more rosy toned and a more nude toned lip liner to work with. Also sharpenable, very nice lip pencil. For hydrating my lips, I was using this lip oil from Hourglass. This is something I got in my Beautylish Lucky Bag, and it's okay. I don't necessarily love this product. It took me a while to get the product to pump out, and here's what it looks like. It's a very nice kind of my lips but better color. It's hydrating and pretty, but this has a certain kind of a smell that you can almost taste, and I did not enjoy that. For the most part, I wore this while I was doing my makeup and then I would remove it when I was going to apply a lip product. But if I wasn't wearing very much makeup, then I would apply just this to hydrate my lips and 
it's okay, but goodness, like this is almost $50. I definitely think you can spend $50 a little bit more wisely than with this lip product. Just apply it a little bit to my lips and yeah, it has some kind of scent that you can almost taste and it's just unpleasant. It's hydrating and it looks pretty on the lips, but I would not recommend purchasing this. And like the NYX product, it makes the cap really messy if you don't wipe it off after using it. It's just you can do better. You could spend $50 so much more wisely than on this. Something else from my Beautylish Lucky Bag that I enjoyed more than the Hourglass. This is from Shantakai. This is in the shade Beach Rose. And it is like a tinted lip balm. And the color is actually not that far off from the Hourglass when applied. But this one has a little bit more longevity. And it doesn't have that nasty taste. I was able to use this with that pinky lip liner. And get some longevity and a really pretty lip look with that one. So I actually enjoyed this one a little bit more. More and I would definitely consider purchasing more from Shantakai in this style. So this one was the Beach Rose Lip Tint. It's the hydrating lip balm. We have it right there. Jouer has a very similar concept with these. These are their Essential Lip Enhancer Shine Balms. These, both of these kind of remind me of the products that Makeup by Mario has now that are so, so popular. And this one is in the shade Amaryllis and this one is a more nude shade. So this one paired with the Wayne Goss lip liner was a really, really nice lip combination. Like I had a nude combo and a pink combo between these two. This one I actually enjoyed more now than when I first tried it because my expectations were for this to be similar to the YSL lip tint, shine, oil, volume, something like that, which are also really, really nice, but I feel like those had more pigment. And then of course, because of the color I chose, it definitely needs a lip liner or else it kind of washes me out a little bit. But once I do apply a lip liner, it looks much better. And these do come in other colors. Very, very similar to the Shantakai product. Let's move right along and talk about this one. This is a gloss from Smashbox and the shade is absolutely stunning. Okay, the shade is beautiful. Let me put it over here. This is another one that I was wearing with the Wayne Goss. Now this lip gloss is a little bit thicker. Not as thick as a MAC lip gloss, but still a little bit thicker. And this one, I purchased from a BoxyCharm pop-up some time ago. This one is in the shade Beachy Keen. The color is so, so, so stunning. Very, very beautiful. And because it's a thicker formula, it is long lasting. But tell me if I've been had by BoxyCharm. This has a very strange fragrance. It does kind of smell like the MAC lip glosses, but more like when they start to go off a bit. Like it doesn't smell bad but I don't enjoy the fragrance. And it was like that from the day that I got it. So I don't know if they were peddling older product, but the shade is really, really nice. So I'll let you guys let me know if you've tried these glosses from Smashbox, like what the fragrance is or the scent or the taste of them. And then I'll decide if this is something that I can live with because the color is just so pretty. I can't get over it. It's such a pretty peachy nude. Very, very pretty. Let's see, let's talk about this guy next. This one is by NARS and this is is the shade Whiplash and this is the soft matte tinted lip balm. So it's kind of similar to the Shantakai and Jouer except for this one is supposed to have a matte texture. So here's what that one looks like and again these balmy type products they come in these fitted tubes I guess to prevent them from melting down and here's what that one looks like. It is definitely less hydrating than the Jouer or the Shantakai but I would by no means call this matte especially when I apply it to my lips. I think it's more of a satin finish. I like it but I just don't think that it's matte. <laughs> <laughs> to me, this is a satin finish product and it's very hydrating. It's one that stays hydrated throughout the day. So if you press your lips together, you kind of refresh it a little bit. But when these were first introduced last year, they were limited edition and people were saying how interesting they were in terms of their texture, that they go on like a balm. They feel like a balm, but they look matte. I would agree with everything except for the matte part. To me, they just look satiny and I have pretty dry lips. So that's saying something, but these are very, very comfortable lip products. 
super comfortable, super easy to wear. And NARS makes fantastic lip products all the way around. I did enjoy that one. And I believe I have one other shade from this collection. Two more lippies to go through. The first one is by Natasha Denona. And this is the I Need a Nude in the shade 36 Amorosa. I believe that this launched with the Love Palette or maybe the Mini Love Palette. And that's why it has the special packaging. This is such a pretty shade. I didn't love it at first because it's very, very light and it does have a tendency to wash me out a little bit. But paired with either of those two lip liners, usually I use the one by Urban Decay, the one in the shade Rush, to kind of pull on the pink a little bit more. It's a very, very nice cool tone nude and it looks really good with colorful makeup. It looks finished, but it doesn't distract from your eye look. So this is one that I do recommend. Her formula is really, really nice. And these are really heavy and weighted and they're magnetized. And this one is extra pretty because of the color. The last lip product I was using is from Fenty Beauty and this is the Stunna Lip Paint. This one is in the shade Unveil. I wore this one when I created a very bold look using the Picking Peonies palette from Simply Posh Cosmetics and these are nice liquid lipsticks. They're very liquidy when they go on but they do dry matte and because this shade is so so intense, I mean look at it compared to the other colors that I was working with, you do have to be very careful along the lip line. I do recommend working with a lip liner especially if you have fine lines around your lips like I do. You can see even on the lines on my skin it's starting to kind of bleed out a little bit since it is so liquidy. So I prefer to to work in really really light layers while I'm applying it but in terms of a liquid lipstick it is one of the more comfortable formulas and it is a really unique color I really like those chocolatey browns I think I have all the Fenty lip colors in this collection with the exception of the little minis that she launches around holiday that are limited edition colors but here are the lippies for the month of February this is the only tray that we talk about from the second drawer I had forgotten to include my setting sprays last month so I actually just kept them in this month's rotation so that I could share them with you and for the month of March I will rotate something else in. I actually I already have I just wanted to kind of cover these so these are the two setting sprays that I'm working with I have the airbrush flawless setting spray from Charlotte Tilbury and this one I actually have grown to like it a little bit more the first time that I used it I was not impressed I just think people have a tendency to hype products up so high that then my expectations get very very unrealistic but this is actually a very nice setting spray to get your powders to blend together and to give you a long lasting set to your makeup i think that it's really really good for that purpose it doesn't add any added luminosity so if you don't enjoy a luminous finish this is one that's not going to alter whatever finish you have to your makeup already i did originally purchase the mini of this one and my pump was damaged on that one i don't know why it doesn't pump out the product anymore so my goal is to get this one low enough to kind of combine the two into one bottle and so i've been using this one pretty consistently and then this is one of my absolute favorites like it's a little bit discolored because this one just changes color as it sits around but this is the glow recipe watermelon glow ultra fine mist and this just has the nicest mist of any setting spray ever it also has the nicest fragrance it smells like a watermelon jolly rancher and this one does give you a very very luminous finish to your makeup so this one i find doesn't extend the wear of your makeup but if you're looking a little bit dry this one makes all the difference it really hydrates your skin and gives you that dewy glow i really really love it so these were actually a great pairing for my shop my stash because depending on the need for that specific day i could use one or the other and they just behave very very differently but they're both really really good setting sprays in their own right if i had to pick a favorite it would definitely be the glow recipe my only complaint with this one is that every time i spray it i then want to set it down and obviously with the curvy bottom it's not going to set down it sets down like this and so very minor complaint but i do really enjoy this one if i had to pick a favorite and the two face palettes that i was using for the month are both very very reflective so i'm going to go ahead and open them up so that it's not too distracting so let's go ahead and talk about this hourglass one first this one is the ambient lighting 
at its sculpture palette. I think that this one was from last year and I was using all of the products in this palette. I used a combination of those two powders for finishing powders. I do enjoy doing a final buff every time I do my makeup. This was one of the highlighters that I was using this month. Very, very beautiful. I used the bronzer once to deepen out the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil bronzer. This one shows up on my skin a little bit better. With Hourglass products, swatching them doesn't really ever give an indication of what the products perform like. These are ones that you really kind of have to apply to the skin to really see. But you can see even with the swatch of the bronzer here that it definitely shows up a lot more than the Too Faced one. These little palettes are really great. I have so many of them at this point and I haven't even put a dent in them even using these buffing powders exclusively for the entire month. So I'm gonna try to resist this year. I think it's inevitable that they're gonna launch another one of these palettes palettes but like I said I'm gonna try to resist because at this point I have a lot of them to work through and they're going to last a very long time there's that highlighter you can see it right there these palettes are really nice quality. At this point, I would say don't buy them when they first launch. They retail for $80, but they almost always go on sale. And I believe that last year's holiday collection is even still available for purchase. So they're very, very nice. And it's a great way to sample their products. The quality is really good. They don't skimp on their holiday collections, in my opinion. But yeah, I don't need a fifth or sixth or seventh, whatever number I'm on. I definitely don't need that. But I do enjoy them. And then, last but not least, I mentioned in my last Shop My Stash that I would report back on the deeper version of the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette. I ended up buying both of them. Let's go ahead and swatch the face products first. I have used both of them. The blush performs very nicely. It's a little bit deeper than I personally prefer for a blush, but it shears out really well. The highlighter is so, so beautiful. It's a tad deep for my skin tone. So when I wear it, I kind of wear it very, very lightly and more towards the back part of my face. And then I'll pair the Vesca highlighter more on the inside of my face. I mean, it's completely fine. This one was intended to be the deep palette and I wasn't sure which one was gonna suit me better. And personally, I would say the face products, I prefer more from the light palette, but the eyeshadows I actually prefer more from this palette because I think there's more variability here and I enjoy kind of more intense eye looks. And that's definitely the case even when I'm wearing neutrals. So the mattes are the typical Natasha Denona matte formula and again these are really really rich tones and then the shimmers are so so beautiful and of course you have the highlighter that you can also pair with the others so in terms of the eyeshadows i do enjoy the deep palette a little bit more look at this beautiful taupey shimmer shade and these are such smooth creamy mattes they're just so pretty there you have those swatches. They're just gorgeous eyeshadows. These palettes were really, really nice. I did not need both, but there's aspects of each that I enjoy more. Like I said, with this one, I really prefer the eyeshadows, and with the light palette, I really prefer the face products. So I'm glad I have them both. There's a place for both in my collection, but depending on your skin tone and what you're really looking for from the palette, you definitely don't need both. You can choose one or the other. So that's everything for my monthly makeup basket for the month of February. I feel like I did a really good job trying out different products in my collection in the earlier part of the month. The second half was a little tougher and that's kind of spilling over into March as well. So for March, I probably won't have an extensive selection of products, but I have already started building my makeup basket and I'll have more goodies to share with you then at the end of this month. And that video will probably up at the beginning of April. Now I will have my monthly makeup haul for February, which I bought a lot of stuff I'm excited to share that with you and then my one in one out where for every item I buy something has to be decluttered or emptied so that's all coming up as well as an update on my project pan hopefully that all sounds good to you and if you enjoyed this video please let me know by giving it a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button please don't forget to hit the notification bell if you'd like to be notified every single time I upload as I do not have an upload schedule right now I do share those updates on Twitter and I'm active on Instagram and TikTok. If you enjoy those platforms, I would love to see you over there. Thanks again for spending a few minutes of your day with me. I really appreciate it. I hope you're doing really, really well, and I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon.
on my next one. Bye-bye.